Hello and welcome to the final episode of creating chat app with React Studio and Firebase. Last time we created this add chat room functionality. So in this episode we're going to create writing uh, chat messages and uh, deleting chat messages functions. So after that basically the, the, the main app is, is ready. So let's start with uh, creating the needed data stuff here. So first we need to create new data sheet which will contain all the chat messages. Let's call this chat messages. And then we need to use the Firebase connection and use in a collection EID we're going to use the path. And the path will be uh, it will be uh, will be chat rooms then uh, the chat uh, room document ID and messages. So this will be the path. So we're going to build this so that every time a user selects a chat room, we're going to store this, this ID or key into the uh, data slot. So I'm going to copy one of these. Copy. Make sure that there are there's a message here, yes. And then head to the chat messages and let's call this I think it was chat rooms so this way we're going to load one one row here and we're going to actually remove this and use data slot here instead of this static static ID. So let's create a data slot. Data slot select, selected chat room key. And we can use as a default value we can use that the value I just copied. So when you, when you actually publish this to anywhere, remove this. But in a in a in a development phase, we have to some, have some kind of default value here. And I will copy this. We go to chat messages and as you can see, there's a there's a hint how you can. Uh, inject data slot value here so we're going to create dollar sign slot slot name and it should it should work like this you can check it out by reloading data yes so then we have all the things that we need in a data Maybe we should, uh, I think we should make a, uh, for the query, query, we could make the order, order the results so that the last, uh, I mean the newest, newest message would be in a, in a bottom of the list. So I've actually already saved this order by here, so I can just copy it. It's basically order by timestamp. And, uh, Ending like this. And then let's head, head to the project map. We need a screen for chat messages. Let's call it chat. Let's call it messages. Add a navigation bar for it. And then we need a component for, for writing message and then we need a list for the showing the messages. So let's start with the list. And for the list we need a empty component. This will be chat item. So this represents one chat message. Make it a little bit bigger. And this will be the sender. So in this this text field we're going to keep the sender name or show the sender name 
I'll put everything 10 points from each side. And then I can just copy, duplicate this so that the sender, and then we have, we will have message, and this will be time. Finally, let's change the color for sender. I think we should use something like orange, like in, a, in, in WhatsApp, and create the create the properties also for this one. So this text will be sender username, and this property will be message body, and this will be this will be the Stamp. And that that is ready. So all we need to do is create a list, topic list here, make it full width by clicking both of those, and take items. We are going to show chat messages here, so data will be chat messages, and the list item component will be chat item. And here we have our first chat message. There's a new new feature called uh, I think it's it's here. It's in element list. So scroll all automatically to last item, and this can be applied to one screen at a time in a, in, a, in one screen and one list in one screen. So because we're going to want to have the messages so that the newest one is the bottom one. And then we want to scroll the list to the bottom one. So I will just apply this and use it. Uh, the scroll behavior will be auto. If I change the smooth, change it to smooth, it will be the scrolling will be visible. And uh, next, we need uh, the uh, the sending sending message component here. So I will create that from here. Send and this component will actually just contain editable text area and a button. So there's a button. Send and I will make this so that it will be. 10 points from each, each side. Perhaps do the same thing for for button. Just click allow stretch and minus 10 from minus 10 from the right, not 100. And uh, let's call this text area message so it will be more clear and then select the send button when user taps save data and we want to save data to data sheet select chat messages and uh, message body this will be this comes comes from the text area message obviously it's this one and uh, sender username this is uh, stored in the data slot you remember when we open the open the app, we will we we store this username to data slot. So I'm going to change that one. And timestamp. This is something that we have to add in script. So I just click edit script and uh, make it so that input dot timestamp. I think I have the script actually ready here. Yeah. So we can just do it so that, so we get the new date and then input dot timestamp will be current date get time. It will be the Unix time. Click save. So every time when when user clicks the send button, we'll send the text area value to message body attribute and then 
data slot username to sender username and timestamp will come with the script. And obviously, last we want to clear clear the uh, input fields. So basically, we're going to clear this this chat message box here. So next time when you want to uh, type something, you don't have to set, uh, clear the clear the previous message. And then just drag this to the uh, message screen like this. And now it's in a scroll flow, but we want it to be like hovering on top of everything. So I will put it to foreground and actually align it from bottom and left and right. So it will be. So it will be uh, always on the bottom of the screen like this. And that's why actually we need to do one thing, but I'm, I'm going to show it you later. So we can just test it out. So it, does it work? Ah, obviously there's something we need to do. We need to have a go-to interaction from, from chat rooms to messages. So let's open this one and select the chat room name text field. And when user taps, First, what we are going to do, we're going to save save the selected uh, chat room key to data slot. So I'm going to change this and uh, this one, and then value of the component property, which will be the obviously the uh, not the key, it will be the document key. So this is just for so that we when we when we head to that message screen we we get the real uh, real right data for right chat room and then add a second interaction and just go to and messages and click save and test it on browser so here's the app Let's give us a username, click continue. Now we saved a username to data slot. And then, then let's head to the first chat room. And there's the uh, one message that we created when we created the, the backend, uh, backend database. And now we can type a message to this. Uh, this chat room, hello world, send. And as you can see, it appears here. It looks like we need to make some twi uh, some minor tweaks here. Uh, it looks like list is not list. It's a it's a grid now. So if I add more more messages, you will see that it's a it's a grid instead of list, and that's easy easy to handle. And then it I think we should have it so that. That the first, the latest message would be uh, as a last in the list. So we need to change the, the scroll or the orientation of the list. So let's head back to the back to the project and start by uh, fixing the list. So I'll just select the list, and uh, here's the new setting: scroll automatically to last item, and uh, keep it as auto. The setting here, smooth will be visible. So when you enter the screen, it will be visible that the uh, that the list is is scrolled. And then uh, we need to go to uh, here it is. Yes, list and grid settings and narrow phone, wide phone. There's a two columns now. I want to change it to one so that it's always just one message per per row. And uh, let's try it again. Let's call us Steam this time. And hello world. Like this. Line one. And here's here it is.
it's like a, as you can see uh, if we go to go to list here uh, it's it's so that a uh, list is actually full screen so it would be wise to add a like a spacer spacer uh, under the list so that it never goes behind the uh, send message message uh, component so I just draw a rectangle I can I make it full width and then drag it under the list so that it will be always uh, the, the, the height of the of this will be the same height as this this component so so that when when you when the list uh, is longer then this will always keep it so that it, it will not be under the send message component and let's change the the color here again let's just put it to white so it's actually basically invisible and uh, we can try it again and because we, we used white color it's visible here so we need to change the color to match the match the color here or just make it transparent and John Doe is actually uh, it's because of the timestamp it's it's shown here so we can just go here and and uh, try to find that document and just delete that and uh, let's delete it here so I think one more thing we could add here is the the delete button so just this is just for demo purposes uh, first I will just change the color of this rectangle and I just put the op opacity to zero so it will be always always like uh, transparent uh, but uh, let's go go to message screen here I will just add a icon button I'll put it on on foreground group and uh, align it from the right side and from the top and change the icon we could use something like yeah we could use this one here and maybe maybe change the color to somewhat red and then just head to the interact and when user tap component here and here's the delete ent entry and because we're now in the list uh, so the studio takes care of that that it will delete the right entry right row from the data sheet and then from the back end so I will just put it like that and uh, we can just click open in browser again I can just click here and the message message will be disappeared and it will disappear as well from the back end so let's do it so that you will see the both both here the back end and the and the, the app window I just click here and it will be disappeared from here and one cool thing is that you can test this already with the few different browsers so this could be like mobile phone whatever and, uh, this could be like iPad or something I will just use the local host load the same same here same app to different browsers and then this could be Pam and this could be the white and we can go to first chat room with all of these and type something
So you can see it's basically it's instantly uh, updated to all of the all of the screens here. So this is the best basic basic kind of uh, chat app app uh, structure with with React Studio. In next uh, following episodes, maybe we could do it so that you, we could add a like button and maybe calculate the, the likes for each message. And for that, you can use uh, the cloud functions in Firebase. Basically, they are not that much of a of a React Studios uh, features. They are more about Firebase features, but it's easy to make it so that when you add a click click a button, then it will add uh, add add something to Firebase, and then that will trigger the cloud function for calculating how many likes for each each uh, each chat message. So I will uh, include uh, attach the, the the project file to this uh, YouTube video, and uh, I will delete the backend. So the backend that I'm using it's not available anymore but you just need to create your own own database in Firebase and uh, you can just use use the uh, React Studio project as a base or just build it by from the scratch. So thank you and uh, hopefully you enjoyed and um, if you have any any ideas just send us a message message to hello at neonta.com. Thank you. Bye.